Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge and welcome to another book haul, which as always, I've held off for too long and I'm surrounded by mountains of books on my floor, but that's all right. Um, also, I'm coming to you from my bedroom floor today so I don't have to bend over. The last time I did a book haul, I like was sitting in my chair and my back hurt so bad by the time that I was done with it. It was ridiculous. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive in to this book haul. So as you know, if you've been around me for any amount of time, you know that I like historical romances and I like Cressley Cole, which is a new thing. So we have a lot of those to go over today. So we'll go ahead and get the uh, Cressley Cole bits out of the way and then we'll dive into just a whole bunch of goodies, guys. Like I've been having a great summer with the books that I found. And after that unhaul video I did where I got rid of like 60 books, I've bought more than that back already. It didn't take long, it didn't take long at all. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Um, I'll go through these kind of quickly because I bought all the Cressley Colt. <laughs> there is a stack of some that I had already purchased back there and now I have all of them and I'm so excited. So I got A Hunger Like No Other, which is book number one. Um, Dark Desires After Dusk, which I think is book five. Yep. I have Lothair, which is book 11, 12. I don't, it depends on if you count the, um, the novellas in or not. This book, guys, I've already reread this one. Um, and I just binged the whole series because Lothair is just, he's a twisted daddy. And I love that. Like, he is a bad daddy. <laughs> I love it so much. Mm, bad daddy. I got Shadow Seduction, which is the male male novella, a gay romance that is a gay fate of mates, which is awesome. And even though Cressley had to self-publish this, and I think that there is some story structure problems with it, I still love that she did it, and I still enjoyed this. It just wasn't the same like knock my pants off as some of the other ones were, but I mean, it's still a great fucking book because it's Cressley Cole. Um, these are out of order. So I just got Sweet Ruin, which is the uh, 17th book or something like that. This one was bananas good. I can't wait to reread this one as well because I love Ruin and uh, Josie. Like, I just love them so much. I have Dark Sky. This is the book after Lothair or before Lothair? Nope, it's after McGreeve, but before Sweet Ruin. So whatever number that is. I actually really enjoyed The Reckoners, even though they are crazy. Um, I have Deep Kiss of Winter, which has, um, this has the book um, Winter's Kiss or something. What's it called? And then it has a Gina Showalter book in it too. Untouchable by Cressley Cole and Tempt Me Eternally by Gina Showalter. These are basically two full-size books in here, okay? But they're novellas for them. So there's that. I still need to read this one. Dreams of a Dark Warrior. This is book number 10, maybe, nine or 10. Demon from the Dark, which is, oh no, yeah. This one's number seven, eight, something like that. Kiss of a Demon King, book six. R Rydstrom and Sabine. I love, this one's great too. I love, so my favorite design of the series, because the design series, like, has changed through the years. Like, you can tell, like, the covers of the first four or five are much different than these. But these are my favorite set of colors. How it's, like, the grayed out guy and then, like, the sparkly title. Oh, it's just so beautiful looking. I love it. And then one other by Cressley Cole I want to share is that I am slowly collecting all of her other books as well. So this is the first book in the McCarrick Brothers trilogy, which is a um, Scottish trilogy, historical romance. So, and it's blurbed by Julia Quinn. So I'm very excited. I was doing a little peeking at this one, and I think this one has to do with like stealing a bride or something. Um, like he's trying to get revenge. So he like kidnaps his girl or whatever. And I'm here for it. Let's go. I'm really excited to read one of Cressley's other books. Like her historical romances. Because she has two 
two other series um, because obviously I've read the Game Maker series, but that's that's basically the the IAD, but in pre like but in a non magical world <laughs> because those books are basically faded mates as well. So then I have uh, two other paranormal books that I'll just go ahead and show you since I just did a bunch of paranormal. I have Slave to Sensation by Neilani Singh, which I'm reading this in August for um, Summer Fling. Very excited to read this. This is the Psy Changeling series. And so I don't know much about this world. I purposely don't want to. The same way like IAD, besides hearing that people loved the books, I didn't know anything besides that they were paranormal. And so I don't want to know anything about these this one either, but I know lots of people love it. And so I'm here for it. I'm, I am here to see what happens. And then I'll do this one because it's a new release and so then I'll work into my like newer release books here. I have, um, this is a paranormal romance. This is Desolation Road by Christine Feehan. This is going to be book number four in Torpedo Inc. I've read the first two books. They've been like 3.5 stars. They're also on Audible Escape, which is why I started listening to it. Um, this is a group of like bikers who they stop other corrupt biker gangs is basically what it is. Um, and they each have different like paranormal gifts. Um, a lot of them having to do with like mind, mind things. Um, and this one's going to be about absent who he can like tell if you're lying or not. Um, and I'm just really excited because like in the la in the second book, they were trying to take down like a sex trafficking ring, um, child slavery ring. And I just love that these big tough biker dudes who will kill you are saving people. And I, I really like it. So even though the, the parts about it I don't like as much is some of the romance is just, I love alpha males. I love that dirty, nasty, let's go. But it's the thought process when it's so obsessive can be a bit much for me, but I'm liking them. It's good. So some other new releases, A Touch of Stone and Snow by Milla Vane, gotta have that, as well as I have The Beast of Blackmore, which is the, uh, like, novella that goes, I think it takes place before the first book in the series, but this is the second one, and I'm still sad they don't have maps in them, but you can look up the maps on her website if you want, but this is book two, this one is a childhood, like, they well it's a second chance because they were lovers before but they were children together and then they were lovers and then a thing happens but also the woman is a guard her name is Lizanne and she is like banished from her home and so she's like a mercenary she's like a guard for hire um and the guy who broke her heart Arax he needs her protection according to the goddess not according to himself, but because he wants Lizanne around him again, he's willing to be like, sure, you can be my guard. If I can have you with me all the time, I'll take that up. Um, these are like barbarians kind of, sort of. Um, there is also a intelligent saber toothed cat in here, tiger, and they can like communicate with him a little bit. And it's, it's so good. If you haven't read A Heart of blood and ashes like you really need to you really need to and if you get into this series the third one is coming out this December so like you can you know this whole series is coming then I picked up Katie Roberts new um, traditionally published she has this um, like short story bind up or whatever um, for like uh, category romances basically and this is a cowboy trilogy which is kind of fun um, and so it's Wild Cowboy Night. So if I see Katie Roberts' name, I buy it. There are lots of her books I haven't read yet. I mostly have read just a couple of her um, older works and then like her Wicked Villain series. But I'm a member of her Patreon and I get all of her stuff because she's my queen. So I had to buy this. And then this isn't a brand new release, but it is the most recent release of Kerrigan Byrne. Um, and I have some more Kerrigan Burn to talk about as well. But since I was talking about new releases, this one is How to Love a Duke in 10 Days. And this is the first in, what's this series supposed to be called? I can't remember. I, mm, I saw it somewhere. Because Scott 
to Scott to handle or something is coming out later this year but just her covers are so beautiful for not even being step backs like so look at these so these are the other three that I picked up this month um, I picked up the Highlander the Duke and the Duke with the dragon tattoo or I mean the Scott Betts his wife I also have the Duke on audible because for some reason the Duke is out of print and the paperback copy of it was like $200 so I'm like what so I'm still trying to find the Duke but I have read the first five of this series this is the Victorian rebel series I've read the highwayman the Duke and then the highwayman the hunter the Duke the Hi, the Scott at uh, the Scott Betts wife and so I'm reading the Duke of the Dragon tattoo for summer fling I'm very excited to start this book all of these are on audible escape as well um, and book seven which is about the police detective in this series I have on its way to me but it's been held up for some stupid reason but I can't wait to read that one because I love Kara Gainsburn's books. They are dark historical romances. Most of them are Scottish. And I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with her. I love her. She's my queen. So you should read Kara Gainsburn. All right. What else? Where else should we go? Why don't we continue with the historical romances here? Since we just made a detour for that. So The Beast of Beswick is another book I'm reading in October for, or August for Summer Fling. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling about Lady Astrid Everly and Lord Nathaniel Hart. Um, I heard this one is really good. It's also the buddy read for August on my channel. So if you want to buddy read that with us, you can check out my Discord down below and join in. Um, I'm very excited for that. I picked up Never Trust a Pirate by Valerie Roman, um, basically because it's, it says pirate on it, and I'm all for the pirates. So this one is about Cade Cavendish and Miss Danielle Lacrosse. Pretty cover. To Catch an Earl, this is The Bow Street Bachelors by Kate Bateman. I picked up this one because I got approved for an arc that's the third one in the series. So I picked up the first one, hoping to read this before I read the arc for that one. This one, I just thought the cover was beautiful. Um, there were a lot more of these are just from, uh, well no, this one was suggested to be my someone. Um, and I love the cover. This is The Dangerous Fist Count by Miranda Neville. Someone on my channel suggested this one. So this one is, she needs a, she needs a husband. And so she marries this guy's cousin because reasons. There we go. I picked up London's Perfect Scoundrel by Susan Enoch. This one has the step back on the back. It's hard with the shiny covers for my I picked up Wicked Intentions by Elizabeth Hoyt. I have been, both Susan Enoch and Elizabeth Hoyt, I have another Elizabeth Hoyt here. I've been collecting their books because people keep suggesting them to me. This is the Raven Prince. Um, and so I keep buying them. And eventually I'll get to them. And it's fine. I like collecting as many of an author as I can. Because if I do like them, then I can binge all of their books. And if I don't like them which I usually do like them, I'll just give them back because I don't pay for much of them, so who cares? I finally picked up The Rogue of Fifth Avenue by Uptown, by Joanna Shoup, the first in the Uptown Girl series, because my girl, uh, my girl Izzy really wants me to read this series, and so do a lot of other people, and I really want to try Joanna Shoup. I've listened to some of her interviews on Faded Mates and Wicked and the Wallflower, and she just seems delightful. And this is American historical. Um, ooh, see, it's blurred by Sarah McLean. It's awesome. So I've heard really good things about this series. So it should be fun. I picked up the last three Tessa Dare books that I needed. I now own everything that she's written. So this is, it, I think it's called the Dairy Maid series or something, like the Devilish Dairy Maids or the whatever, I'm not sure. But it is Goddess of the Hunt, uh, Surrender to, of, to a Siren, and A Lady of Persuasion. So very excited for that. Um, I still have like six Tessa Dare books to read, and so I'm glad I added some more because I'm scared. 
Then I picked up the last Mackenzie book that I was missing. So this is Lady Isabella's Scandalous Marriage by Jennifer Ashley. I love this one. This is like, this is a marriage in trouble story. And it's also, you know, it's like a second chance. They've been living apart for a few years. He is a artist and they have had a tough go of their marriage lately after a miscarriage they separate for a while and he needs to get himself sober and she needs to like learn how to be herself again and I just love how Jennifer Ashley writes she also writes dark historicals and they're really good and so these are two more of her like earlier works I don't have yet this one is one of her pirate novels the pirate hunter and this one is the mad bad duke which just looks awesome this one I think is like even a little bit this one says there's a love spell. Wow, that's cool. So I'm slowly getting all of her books too. She has an entire, she has an entire pirate series. So I'm slowly grabbing all of those because I'm sure that I'm gonna like it. Like there's one of her books is called Confessions of a Lingerie Addict. I need to find that one. So stacking up on my Jennifer Ashley. I found an old copy of Jane Eyre. <laughs> I really didn't need another copy of Jane Eyre, but this one was printed in 1962 by Scholastic Books. And I mean, it was only 25 cents at the thrift store I was at, so I thought I would get it. Because I have, I have about four copies of Jane Eyre at this point. Um, and when I saw this one for only 25 cents, I was like, there's no reason not to get it. Um, so I did. And then also at that thrift store, I found a Jude Devereaux. This one is A Knight in Shining Armor. This one doesn't have anything fun about it, but I want to start some Jude Devereaux's and this one seemed pretty fun. Also, yeah, this is originally 1989, so I want to start that. I found this one, Knight of Fire, Knight as like in a knight, um, by Shannon Drake, and this was the inside of it. And I just thought it was really beautiful. I've never heard of Shannon Drake, but when I see a pretty step back, I buy it and then I ask questions later. This is a 1993 release. So the year I was born, <laughs> that's fun. Um, and then I have some Stephanie Lawrence for you. Um, I'm There are so many books in the Sinster collection um, and I just slowly end up like, God, buying all these books. I hope I like her. So I got The Pursuits of Lord Kit Kavanaugh and I got A Buccaneer at Heart, which I'm pretty sure is like another like pirate novel. And then I found a hard copy of The Tempting of Thomas Carrick, which this is a sinister book. So when I see hardback romances, I buy them so quick, especially the thrift stores in my town, they're either like a dollar or two dollars. And so it's like, why not? Because they're beautiful. Then I got a couple classics here. Um, I found a mass market edition of A Kingdom of Dreams. So I only have the like trade paperback version and it's kind of big and awkward. And I loved this book. So I decided to buy another copy. Again, this one was at the store where it was 25 cents. So I figured I would get it. I still want to find like original covers of these books. Um, but I don't care. I'll buy double copies of this stuff because I'm excited for it. I have The Gift by Julie Garwood, which this one is a pirate novel too. Or the, it says that the hero used to be a pirate. I don't know. I loved The Bride, so I'm all in on Judy Garwood. I'll buy them all. This is called Deceive Not My Heart by Shirley Busby. Again, another author that I never heard of, but this was 25 cents and the cover looks like this. Holy cannolis. It is so beautiful. And I think this one is a medieval. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Is this a medieval? No, it's not a medieval. But it's beautiful. I got The Bride Bed by uh, Linda Needham. 
because bam, this is the back. I told, I've told you this, it, when there are step backs where the man is naked, um, in this one the woman is like naked too, but I love when like the man is naked in them. It, it makes me happy because usually it's like the woman's being undressed or something. I ordered this one because it was suggested by a viewer. This is Ravish by Amanda Quick. It's got one of those kind of like, I like when there's the, the stacked pictures. It's really cool. Um, this one, I guess, is kind of like a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, and yeah, it was suggested by one of my viewers. So I will do that. Like if people give me recommendations for historical romances, I put them all in a document that I own. And then when I am ordering books from Better World Books or Thrift Books, I'll just pull up that document and like buy like five of them. I'm totally trusting you guys for them to be good. So know that. I actually have one more paranormal that I didn't notice. Um, and that is The Rogue Hunter by Lindsay Sands. I found this at that store where they're 25 cents. Um, this is not the first in the series, but since it was only 25 cents and I eventually want to read her vampire series, I was like, well, might as well pick it up now and just put it on the shelf for later. So this is cool. Very bloody, bloody looking, right? All right. I have a couple more historical hardbacks. So this book is actually one that I used to love this author. She's someone that I'm hesitating on rereading because I'm scared, but also I like darker historicals now. So I think I might still like her. I don't know. I go up and down, but this is the Wyndham legacy by Catherine Coulter. I have read every historical romance Catherine Coulter has written. Some of them are easier to stomach than others. The Wyndham trilogy, I remember liking. Um, and I, again, I couldn't help it when I found it in hardcover. Um, the only downside to hardcovers is no step backs, but, and then I found this totally random one. This is a barbarian romance basically. And it's called the Norse King's daughter by Sandra Hall. And it was blurbed by Christine Feehan, who I really like. Um, and on the back it says hell hath no fury, like a princess scorned. And so I just had to have it. I mean, look at it. It's gorgeous. That is like 80% of why I buy these days. And then side note, I found a perfect condition. It was so funny, mini story time. This book I'm about to show you, I found a hardcover copy of it at one thrift store and I was so excited and then I opened it and it had weather damage inside and it's like, I'll just wait. This isn't that rare of a book that I won't find it again. And then literally the next store we went to, because I took my grandparents to like three different thrift stores, there was a perfect copy of Just Listen by Sarah Dessen, which I actually just recommended in my, for my sweet and clean books. Um, and there's a perfect edition hardcover. This book is my favorite contemporary YA novel. Um, I adore it. I love it so much so much. You can look up my recommendations video if you want to know more about it, but I found this for $2 I think I paid. It's perfect. Okay, so the last books I want to talk about, as usual, are my obligatory um, self-published books that I purchased. So whenever I read books on um, ebook, I make a note of the ones that are my five stars, and then I will purchase uh, physical copies of them because I like to have them for my videos. I like to have them for display. I like to have them to mark them up and I like to have them to borrow out to people if they want them. Um, first of all though, this one, I didn't know that it was self-published, but this was suggested to be my viewer and that is Tempting the Governess by Vivian Westlake. This is a governess student romance. However, I believe she's coming back she's coming back to the family later on. So he's, she's not his governess now, but she was. And so it's only 115 pages, um, but my viewers told me about it. And so I picked it up when I was reading. Um, I like some age gaps where the woman is older. Um, not a ton, but a few of them that I've read, I've like really liked, so. Let's go through these, I'm very excited. So the first two I wanna show you is I got, it's funny, I got book one and book six in the Blindfold Club. I found these on Better World Books. These are really hard to find these for like discount prices, but I'm not in any hurry to collect them because I do own the eBooks of these. 
but this is book one and book six of the blindfold club and i'm slowly gathering all these beauties up i adore the blindfold club and i love these so this one is a boss employee romance and this one is a very interesting this girl is in a um she's part of so there's this she's part of this relationship she's this sub for these two doms so there's these two doms who are in a relationship and then she thirds for them sometimes and then she meets a guy she really likes and so it's about like is she willing to risk the relationship she has with her doms to maybe find someone who's just for her because she's not part of a menage with them she just like is their sub and so maybe she could find a relationship where she's with them maybe good so I bought a copy of Misbehaved by Charlie Rose. This is one of my favorite age gaps I read this year. It's so good. I also love because it's a full cover picture. I didn't know that. This is an age gap. It's a student teacher romance. It's about Remy and Mr. James. I love it so much. He's trying to get revenge on her brother. She doesn't know that. And it's good. Oh God, I love this book. This is a age gap. This is called Him. This is, oh, this one is so sweet. So as I've said, like the cover of this is so like, it's so dark looking, but this is actually a really, really beautiful age gap. This is about Blake um, and Bay. And so Blake, he, this is hard to like get into all of this during this, but he and his ex-wife, they had a kid at 16 and now his daughter is 18 and she's going to college. And so her and her friend Bay come to live with him so that they don't have to pay tuition or they don't have to pay on campus housing. Well, him and Bay start having attraction to each other like right away. And then eventually when his daughter joins a sorority, she doesn't live with them anymore. And so it ends up just being him living with his daughter's best friend. And so it's a best friend's dad romance. And it is so sweet. Like it's just, it's adorable. Um, the reason that it has this kind of photo is that Bay is into photography. And so there's actually a scene in this where like she's taking pictures of him, like smoking and like on his bike. And I like this one because the age gap is there, but because he had kids so young, he's only 34, 35. Um, and so she's 18, almost 19. And it just doesn't feel as like weird as some other ones. Um, I picked up two, uh, two of my favorites. I picked up the hookup by Kristen Callahan. This is the first one in the game on series. I already own the game plan, which I really like. This is a, um, like enemies to lovers slash um, enemies to fuck buddies <laughs> and then like stuff goes from there and I love this series this couple is the foundation of the whole series and I love them it's also a sports romance it's college romance it's a bunch of wonderful things I love it and then I picked up Twisted Emotions by Cora Riley. This is book two in the Kimura Chronicles. I'm slowly buying all of the Kimura Chronicles. This is Nino, Nino and Chiara's book. Um, this one is very, very precious to me, <laughs> but it is really hard because Chiara was raped by her uncle when she was young. And then to make peace between, is it the outfit? No, it's the Familia. Um, to make peace between the New York Familia and the Camorra, they set up an arranged marriage because that's what the Familia usually does for peace, even though the Camorras don't really do that. And Chiara gets stuck, stuck with Nino. Um, Nino, not Nino, with Nino. Um, and he is, like, unfeeling. He is... After some things that happened to him as a child, he just is broken. But he is the gentlest, kindest, most beautiful man ever. And I love him. So there you go. These are the last 50, 50 books that I purchased. 
They all make me so happy. I hope you'll let some of them make you happy. If you want to see more of the books that I'm currently reading or the things that I like to buy, you can check out my Amazon affiliate link down below. I have most of the books that I'm currently reading or really loved are in recommendation lists if you want to check those out. I do get a small commission if you purchase through those, so if you want to help me out and yourself, go ahead and check that out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I put up new videos three to four times a week, and you can watch some more of them right now. Bye!